touch a little bit on the confusion around mammograms. When to get a mammogram, yes. whether you should just get a mammogram or you sure. should get a thermogram. There's, it's just yeah. so confusing. Of course. So, um, in general, we have very, very clear information that shows that starting at age 40 and for as long as you're healthy, yearly mammograms would reduce the chance of someone, of a woman dying from breast cancer compared to if they didn't get a mammogram because of the ability of a mammogram to detect cancers earlier and at a smaller stage. So as a result, the recommendation for those of us who um, do this every day for a living is to start at age 40 for a woman at average risk and to continue yearly. And just a mammogram or do so you we get... can talk about the okay. added stuff. So for sure there's changes to those, modifications to those recommendations. For example, if a woman has a strong family history of breast cancer in someone at a young age, she may start earlier. Um, if my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 45, I need, we, we typically say start screening 10 years younger. So I should probably start at 35. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the modifications. The tests that we do in addition to mammograms that are also recognized to increase our ability to detect cancer are increasingly we're doing sonograms, ultrasounds, um, particularly for women who are at increased risk for breast cancer or who have very dense breasts, which means thicker tissue and can make it harder to see a cancer with a mammogram. Um, those are two groups that we often recommend ultrasound to supplement the mammogram, not instead of. Okay. And the third test that we often do is MRI. And that's usually reserved for women at the highest levels of risk. So um, perhaps, you know, many people have heard about the BRCA genes, which are genes you can inherit. Is that BRCA? Mm -hmm. They were talking about that today. Yeah, yeah. so the BRCA genes put women at the highest risk of getting breast cancer, perhaps up to 80, 90 percent. Yep, and so in that very high risk group, and there are others too, um, we really screen them with everything we have, and so we, do we tend to do mammograms once a year and MRIs once a year to make sure we have the best chance of picking something up early. There are some of the other tests you were alluding to. There are yeah, many other. Yeah, what is a other... thermogram? Because yeah. people talk about that, and yeah, so they're all end with grams. Yes. so it's very confusing. So, <laughs> so there are a bunch of other tests. Um, there's cestamibi scanning, thermograms, ductal lavage. There's all kinds of other tools that have been experimented with. Um, none of them, at this point, are really standard of care and have really been shown to pick up cancer in a meaningful way. You know, the, the thermogram is based on a theory that cancers which are more metab metabolically active generate more heat. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at a breast and basically do a heat map of it, that's what a thermogram is, you may be able to pick up cancer. The problem is, is the level of cancers that we're picking up on mammograms, Sonia, which are cells, cannot generate that much heat to register on a picture. So you're really going to miss most of the early cancers that we pick up on mammograms. And that's that's what's key is early detection. Absolutely. So early detection gives it's you critical. the best chance of survival. Yeah. And and not only does it give you the best chance of survival, but as Eva and I talk about all the time, there's other you know, survival is, let's agree, the most important right. endpoint. But there's other important things too. For example, what a lot of people don't appreciate is that I, as a surgeon, um, when, when a woman's diagnosed with breast cancer, she often has options. She has options for smaller surgery, like a lumpectomy. Mm -hmm. She has options for bigger surgery, a mastectomy. And sometimes women even remove both their breasts. And these are very individualized treatment options. Um, that we work through with each individual patient. But one of the reasons why sometimes a woman doesn't have options is, for example, if her tumor is detected later. Um, we would all agree if you have a one centimeter cancer, that's probably a very straightforward lumpectomy if a woman wants to do it. Um, as a tumor gets larger, it becomes harder and harder to do smaller surgery and to leave a woman with a great cosmetic result, which is a priority for those of us, for, for many of us. No. So I would say that if a mammogram also um, 
allows me to do a less aggressive invasive surgery, surgery. that's a win. If Huge a mammogram win. allows me to pick up a cancer earlier when a woman then might not need chemotherapy, that's a win. So there's other really important endpoints that very few people talk about that are truly benefits of mammograms. You know, bef before mammograms, everyone was getting a mastectomy. And that was in large part due to the fact that cancers were detected only when you could feel them at a very large size. Um, and it was really hard to do a lumpectomy on a large cancer like And the like prognosis that. was probably worse, totally, right? Totally, right. And survival was poor. Right. But the reason why mammograms are one of the things, mammograms and better treatment options are the two main contributors to why we have every reason to be optimistic. The overall survival Which now, is the theme of your book. The theme. So the overall survival now for breast cancer, not for every individual woman, but overall, is about 90%. Oh, okay? thank God. Yeah. And, um, and what people don't know is that between 2000 and 2010, those years, those 10 years, mm -hmm. the death rate from breast cancer dropped almost 2% each year. Wow. Okay? And that's in large part due to this explosion of treatment options that we now have um, for our more advanced patients and early detection in our, in our earlier patients. And that combination has made us, has put us where we are today.